Danny, bang on time. <laughs> Hiya, Hannah. Right, let me just get my iPad sorting its uh, sorting its life out as well. Come on, you silly thing. There we go. I'm not sitting down until I know my iPad's working. Hi, Julie. You're in the right place again. You're making quite a habit of being in the right place at exactly the right time. <laughs> Hi, Angela. Hi, Elise. Hello, Annette. How are we, everyone? Happy birthday weekend, Julie, by the way. Okie dokie. I'm going to sit down now because it looks as though I've got all of my ducks lined up properly. Wonderful. I've been working on the ivy tutorial. How fantastic. Hiya, Dominique. Good morning, Alexandra. Hope we're all okay. Welcome to the next instalment. So you can see it looks quite different to what it looked like last Sunday. Well, Monday even, because the last one I did was Monday, wasn't it? I don't know where, whether I've been coming and going this week, seriously. <laughs> so, as you can see, I've left some of these components blank because the woodwork around these windows and things is the exact same as what I've done here. So I'll show you, obviously, this one. The colour palette for the roof and everything. I've left a section of the roof blank as well and we've recycled those colours along the stone lintel above the door, the steps, the little base here underneath the brickwork, these little bits under here as well and obviously this guttering here. Hi Josephine, Angela's loving the purple curtains, thanks. Oh, Louise managed to catch me live, welcome. <laughs> So yeah, purple curtains. So the materials that I've been using, we're still sticking with the Castle Arts watercolour pencils. Also Prismacolor over the top. I've painted my lanterns in the Arteza metallic watercolours. So I obviously haven't done the inside yet, but you can see the nice sheen that we've got going on there. And then I've been playing around with this little pot of flowers this afternoon. Um, I've recycled the same colours from the curtains on these blooms here and used some acrylic paint pens to create a bit more foliage and things. So don't panic, uh, I will show you the technique on this pot of flowers and these flowers are likely to be blue, which will be the colours of the sky. So enough flannel from me. You can obviously see we've had some, uh, some work done. So let me show you the colours of Castle Arts that we're using. And I'm going to kick straight off with the, getting the watercolour layer down on the sky. Hi Dominique, hi Kay, welcome. So, Castle Arts watercolour. And these are the colours. So we have primary blue, sky blue, some cerulean blue light and cobalt turquoise light. So I'm going to go in first with the third darkest, which is this sky blue colour, so number 46. So let me zoom us in a little. Try and, uh, I don't really think I've quite got my phone stand in exactly the right place, so we're just gonna have to see how we get on this afternoon. And have got my glasses on. So first thing to do is with your lightest blue, which in this case is the cobalt turquoise light, is just outline where your clouds are going to be. So you probably can't quite see, so I'm going to make it a little bit darker. I've got part of an outline there, which obviously finishes here. Obviously given myself as well another little outline here too. And then where we've got the, the blank space here, I'd got another little outline going up here as well. So draw those in first before you start. Don't use graphite because it looks horrendous under watercolour pencils. And then I'm going to go in with that sky blue colour just to map in the dark areas first. And I'm really hoping this metallic bronze stuff is dry. Otherwise, we're going to have a really, really interesting uh, imprint all over the house. <laughs> so yeah, happy Sunday, everybody. I hope you've had a good week. Which is obviously nearly at an end. And unlike last weekend, I've got to go to work tomorrow. Gutted. Never mind. So with these um, watercolour pencils, they're nice and soft and smushy. 
You don't have to worry about doing a blending masterclass with them. It's just about getting the right tone of colour on the right inch of the page. So this is probably the sloppiest colouring you will ever see me do. But it is just about getting the right bit in the right place and then reactivate with water to move it all around. So where I'm going to be integrating in the slightly lighter blues, I'm just going to ease the pressure off on the pencil. Just um, graduated blending like you would normally see me doing anyway. The comments have stopped and I'm like, uh oh, am I about to have a black screen of death or are we all okay? <laughs> Please do chat, you guys. You know how I panic when the comments dry up. I think I'm imminently about to see um, problems at this end. I'm really hoping not. So I'm just going to have some slightly darker areas down here at the bottom. Just listening, says that. <laughs> Hi, Liz. So I'm just popped this here because you do kind of go over the edge a little bit and because this book is ring bound it does sort of wibble about a little bit so just got my spare piece of paper there just to catch any uh, catch any wobbly bits that go over the edge here. Still here says Louise. Julie's colouring along. Hi Christiane. It's like when, when Bev comes on and she's not in capitals when there's no chat going on I'm like uh oh what's happened? <laughs> so I've just changed to the, the more linear blend in towards the top I don't want quite as uh, dark a patch of this blue up top here as I've put around the bottom just enough to um, give a hint of that darker colour at the top I might actually just pop the tiniest little bit between those two chimney stacks oh and I used um, Arteza sparkly paints for these chimney pots as well Hannah's trying to stay awake. Uh-oh. See, that's what happens listening to me. I'm so sorry. So sorry. <sighs> right, how are we doing this? I'm just trying to fathom out where, quite where I'd uh, got to earlier on. So we graduate down. So I'm moving over to the Cerulean Blue Light. So for those of you just hooking in at the moment, we are in Castle Arts Watercolour Pencils. So Cerulean Blue Light. Angela's using the metallic on the rainbow magic. Yeah, that page is inspired, Angela. I was like, oh my God, when I saw that. So beautiful. So, so beautiful. And I had, you know what I'm like with sparkly things. I had to get some sparkle in here somewhere, didn't I? So it's like, we're gonna have, um, we're gonna have glittery metallic lamps. It's just 8 a.m. says Alexandra. I do hope that you've got a coffee in your hand. That is a ridiculous time of day to be tuning in to listen to my drivel. <laughs> so I'm just carrying on, layering this over where we've put that first blue layer. I'm going to do the same, so overblend slightly. I can't even remember, how bad is that? I was using it, what, two seconds ago and I can't remember the colour. Sky blue, that's the one. So over this sky blue layer. I'm just over blending very, very slightly. And just graduating up again. This is the um, the second sort of lightest blue. So I'm going to take this all the way up to where I've drawn this cloud outline. And then we will feather that out with the lightest one. So let's go in around the wee chimney pot things here. Sandra's got, it's 8am for Sandra and you've got a large latte as well. <laughs> I've had a coffee before I came on. I'm still not getting my words out straight. There's no hope for me today at all. Oh dear. There we go. So I'm just going to bring in um, a little more of what I was doing on this side. This has already been faffed about with, as you can see, but I just need to join these together a little. So we will blend these couples together. So what have you, have you girls got in your lattes this morning then? Have we got plain coffee or have we got a flavour on board? Ah, oh, Jeanette's here. Jeanette, I thought you were having baby cuddles today. Or are, are you imminently having baby cuddles? 
right let me see so I'm just going to this is where you kind of forget where you've been because until they've been activated these blues look very similar but I am going to use that much um, that much darker blue in a second just to get some shadowy bits going caramel for Sandra lovely ah the baby's baby's feeding oh bless little Charlie bless him so cute so hopefully today Jeanette will be a slightly um, less stressful live than last week as <laughs> we're all waiting for baby news There we go, I'm gonna can that there and get the blending with the lightest one done and then do my little bit of tweakage over the top. So, them. can't speak. The coffee was really effective, wasn't it, that I've had cobalt turquoise light. Crikey, I think I need another couple of coffees and I had such a good sleep last night, I'm still making no sense. So same again, so going right up to the outline that we've drawn, and of course this disappears because this is the colour that we've drawn it in. And once we activate it with the water anyway, uh, it will blend really, really nicely. So I'm just going slightly over where I've drawn the line. And that's where it will feather off with the water anyway. So very, very nice and basic. I'll just add a little bit of this lighter colour in. So I'll carry on down here as well. So I've got a slight edge of a cloud on this side. So on this bit, we just feather over the top. Do you know it's hanging baby grows while hubby builds a wardrobe? So not such a less stressful, restful um, colouring <laughs> session then, Jeanette. <laughs> wow. Hi Samantha, you're not late, we've only just started a few minutes ago. So let's just carry blending that over. So I'm going to go for the darkest blue now which um, I'm using which is this primary blue colour. So this is just a basic colour blend graduating similar blues together. So on this one I'm just going to use this one really gently in areas where I just want a little bit more of a contrast going on. So around the top of the house, I'm going to have a slightly darker area. <clears throat> right, have a sip of your juice, Suzanne, because you're sounding like you've got 10 frogs in your throat. Oh, <clears throat> dear, oh dear. Right, carry on. So I just want a little bit in there. I might go ahead and just put Hubby's baking, but everybody's doing other things, look. Mr. Jeanette is building a wardrobe. Samantha's been out for lunch. Annie's hubby's baking bread. The cat's stalking me at Julie's end. <laughs> Brilliant. Hiya, Catherine. Fantastic. Oh, dear. Right, let's just go for a little bit of this darker contrast round here as well. Let's go for a little bit around this tree. And then I think what I'm going to do, like I've done here, is I'm just going to put a little pop of this towards the top. Ah, Carol's here. Hiya, Carol. So just to add a little bit of contrast. So, of course, with this one, once they're dry, I will be tweaking this with... Prismacolor over top over the top. I don't know which shades I'm using yet. I've got my colour charts next to me, so we'll see how it dries. And then anything that needs a little bit of um, work over the top, we can do that. So again, like with the house, we're going for the one layer of watercolour, bit of tweakage with Prismacolor, or whatever it is that you've got. It doesn't have to be, um, you know. Um, Prisma, it could be castle arts, it could be whatever really. Oh dear. <clears throat> Okie doke, so let's get going with the water brush. So I'm just going to swizzle that round slightly. I'm going to work from this corner over. So I'm not going to give you guys the tour of the water brush like I normally do. You know that I use the Caran d'Ache ones. 
already slightly damp from earlier on when I was messing about with something else so let's just see if we can persuade it to cooperate for me looks pretty before adding the water it does it does but I think as with all watercolour pencils they, they look nice to a point but they're a little more grainy until you add the water and you add the water and then it looks great so while I'm at the very edge here I am going to swizzle this round so apologies it's slightly back to front for you guys but just because I've got to work, negotiate my way around this it's easier sideways <clears throat> So I can see where my light and my dark areas are. So what I'm actually going to do is work from the edge of this cloud. So I'm just going to move this pigment around gently. I've got my piece of uh, my kitchen paper standing by as well. So I'm just going to blur the edges here, going into that white space that I'm leaving as a cloud shape. just so that it pales it out slightly and then we just start moving the rest of this pigment about so you can see I've given myself a nice pop of the the darker color up here so just going to blob that around a little bit nice technical term that going to blob this pigment around until we find the next light area and then here we go again so Carol, you've asked for this for Valentine's Day. Oh, it is a lovely little book, actually. I'm just going to swizzle that over because it's we've just had a little bit of a slip there with the uh, <clears throat> with the watercolour. So lots of little circles, just moving this pigment round wherever you want it to land. Really, remember we are going <clears> to <throat> excuse me do a little bit of tweaking about with Prismacolor pencils over the top. I'm wanting this to look nice and patchy and loose. I'm not wanting it, you know, there to be lots of harsh pencil lines everywhere. Hi, Amel. Sorry if I'm missing comments just now, guys. I am trying to keep half an eye on my iPad, but <clears throat> because this is water-based stuff, I'm trying to also work quickly. <laughs> so here we go, let's activate into here. So you do get, as you move from place to place, little bits of watermarks and stuff, but that's one of the effects I like with watercolours, so I don't I don't get my knickers in too much of a knot over things like that. Just try and take this as close as reasonably possible to the edge of this page. There will be gaps around the ring binding, which is why I've kind of done this part of the page off screen, because it is blooming fiddly, it really is. I love having them um, wire bound like this because it, it, believe it or not, <clears throat> in the long run it is easier but it's not easier when you go to colour it, this particular area of the page. <laughs> it gets a bit frustrating. So I'm going to try and work my way around into normal direction again now. So we'll carry on around this cloud area. So again, just blurring that lighter pigment into that white area that you've left. Tiny circles with the brush. Take that all the way up to the edge of the page and just keep blotting as we go. So I'm going to finish off the edge of this one. And while it's still wet, you can move it around a little bit as well in a slightly bigger area so we just go for it at the edge of this cloud as well just blur everything together and then where we've got these darker bits of pigment we maybe don't blot the brush quite as much in here because we don't want to lose all of that lovely colour but yeah there'll definitely be a little bit of tweaking going on with uh, Prisma on the top just don't know which shades I'm going to use as yet. So we'll just work this darker pigment in around the tree. And then where we're getting into the edge again of this cloud, just be a little bit careful. So even though the, the bulk of this page 
um, the big areas has been done in watercolour. The paper's actually stood up to it really, really well. Out of the way, tray of pencils. Okie dokie, so let's carry on. I'm going to go around the edge of this one. Again, I just want a little more water than that coming through. Please brush, thank you. That's better. And again, don't worry if you get little stop start lines under here, it doesn't matter. That's why we tweak with pencils once we've finished. And skies aren't, you know, unless you've got a clear day where there's no clouds, um, skies aren't always picture perfect with no lines and blemishes in them either. So I think that's what makes watercolour such a nice medium for this kind of thing. So let's carry on around this cloud area. We've got that slightly darker pigment there just into the chimney. So while we're down here I'm going to just again that palest blue just blend that into the white areas and then just work everything backwards into those darker pigments. And then what we'll do is, I think we'll do one of the purple curtains next while we give this a decent chance to dry. I just need a little tiny bit more water coming out of the brush. That's better. But I know um, in the first couple of sessions on this, a lot of you guys were saying, um, how's the page, how's the page, is it okay? And you know, touch wood, it's been good. I don't, I don't know whether um, that would be the case for all editions sort of in all areas of the world, because I know different publishing houses sometimes use different paperweights and things, don't they? But, you know, I've certainly not experienced any problems and I don't really mind a little bit of a wrinkly page in my book. So Annette's used ink tents without a problem. Yeah, me too. Phoenix coloured pencils, not heard of them, Alexandra. So I was very, very excited on, on Thursday. So, oh, that's what we were going to talk about, weren't we? So you know that I was off for my birthday. So it's my birthday on Tuesday. And as part of um, what I wanted to do, I said to Catherine, I'd really like to go um, over to a shopping complex that's quite near. And I noticed, um, Angela, I didn't see, you were quite true to your word, I didn't see you stalking me anywhere. <laughs> Although that would have been quite funny and you wouldn't have been stalking me in heavenly desserts because it wasn't blooming open. <gasps> but that's another story. So um, it's got a hobby craft and it's got a Coleman's art warehouse. So I've been looking to um, get some more watercolour pencils. So, you know, I've tried out my Arteza ones on this page. Um, you're obviously seeing me using the Castle Arts ones as well. So yeah, we'll go over there and um, we can go in Heavenly Desserts for lunch or whatever. Um, great. So we got there slightly later than planned because there were roadworks everywhere. It's slightly miffed about that, but it was really peaceful. So I went into Hobbycraft, I had a look for these watercolours. So the ones that I was interested in were the Faber-Castell Gold Faber, I believe they were called, I think. Didn't have them because of course they're in the sale, so they've sold out of them. Um, we look at the models for Catherine, she didn't actually find anything that she was particularly interested in either. So out of hobby craft, drum roll please, I came out with <laughs> a Faber-Castell Trio Sharpener, which is one of these ones, which you guys know that I use and a replacement dark sepia polychromos pencil. So I was like, well, that was a bit naff. So we went across the road into the art warehouse, you know, just for a bit of a look, see what else they've got. Uh, came out of there with nothing. <laughs> so as we were in the car on the way home, I said to Catherine, you know what, I'm actually gonna look at this 120 set of the Castle Arts pencils because watercolours, I actually really like these a lot. So I'll have a little look and uh, see how much they are. 
So with a discount code thing that I'd got and the fact that they were on sale, I got the 120 set of Castle Art pencils for £27 instead of £65. And that purchase was made from the comfort of the passenger seat of my car when we were on the way home. <laughs> now, what kind of ridiculous shopping trip was that? So, yeah, that was... Um, I was talking to my colleagues at work, obviously, when I went back to work on Wednesday. And they were like, oh, my God, Jay, you were going to this place, didn't... You know, did you... Oh, I bet you bought them out of all their art stock. I was like, I actually didn't. Um... And they were all like, you've got to be joking. So you actually did your birthday shopping online in the car on the way home. And I was like, yep, pathetic. So yeah, that was the sum total um, of my craft shopping extravaganza experience. Note to self, next time you go to do that, just look and see what the prices are online. Because I'm not even joking, we went and I'd said to her, I'd quite like a walk around the nature reserve bit that's there as well and, you know, blah, blah, blah. We might as well have been in Siberia. I was so, so cold, bits were threatening to drop off. So I was like, yeah, that's not happening. Where's the near, you know, aid, how quickly can I get from where we are right now back to the car with the heating on? And how near is that to a Costa coffee? <laughs> so, yeah, funny. So on Thursday, um, the Castle Arts pencils arrived. So I've now got a full 120 set of these bad boys. And I sat very happily on Thursday swatching them. And they're really, really nice. So yeah, absolutely pathetic. Only I could decide I want to go somewhere for my birthday to buy art supplies, come out with not a fat lot, and then make the main purchase in the car on the way home. <laughs> Welcome to my life, people. Dear, oh dear. There we go. So let's let that dry up. So we have the basis of the sky here. So this will be tweaked a little bit with pencil over the top. And what I'll probably do is one little area of it to show you the tweakage rather than the whole thing. Because I don't want us to run out of time covering stuff. So that's that. Let's have a little look at these curtains. So you'll remember from the original image, um, there was no curtains at the top windows, which I thought was ridiculous. When you look at the basic shape here, that is very simple to draw. It's just almost semicircle or straight lines. So all I've done is copy using um, a pencil first and then a fine liner pen to make it all look consistent. So does the 120 come with all the watercolours or just the regular colours? Well, it comes with, it's like a full set of watercolours. So it comes with this swatching sheet thing. And this is the range of colours. So these are all watercolour colours, obviously. And some of them do match up with the colours in the normal 120 set, not the gold, the classics. Not all of them do, but some of them do. Some do, some don't. And I think that's a pretty decent um, selection. So yeah, anyway, back to curtains. Okay, I've already um, coloured this one in dry, so I'm just gonna crack on and activate that so it can be dry in. And then I'll show you how we coloured this bit here. So as with everything, I'm working from my palest colour into my next darkest colour and so on and so on. So we can just go a little bit carefully under here. And just activate these and then there is of course a bit of prisma colour over the top. Hi Christia! I feel like I haven't seen you for ages. So I'm thinking, depending on what sort of day I have at work tomorrow, I may well carry on with this tomorrow, but I can't actually decide whether I'm going to do it on Instagram, which means until I get it on YouTube, everybody has to look at it sideways, mm -hmm. or whether to just actually create another event and carry on with it in here. I feel I probably need to do it on Instagram, to be fair to um, the guys over there, because not everybody has this platform. 
but most people have YouTube so keep an eye out I will think on what I'm going to do and it may well be like a last minute by the way I'm going to be on again type of situation depends at whether tomorrow is as big a train wreck as I'm anticipating it to be <laughs> I'm hoping not <laughs> okay curtains so we have these shades so cobalt oh, why can't I say cobalt what is wrong with me cobalt violet light violet deep and purple lake deep so I'm just going to keep them there for a little second because I know some of you are writing them down <clears throat> oh I'm glad I'm not on my own Alexandra if you've been into Hobby Lobby and only come out with a pencil and a bit of paper I'm quite happy <laughs> my juice are going to keep going froggy <clears throat> so again we're going to start with our darkest and work our way down so going in with the purple lake deep to start with and we're just going to concentrate this basically top and bottom meeting in the middle so I'm just going to go with the lines that have been put on here by the artist originally which of course would be mimicking folds of fabric and keeping the direction downwards rather than lots of little circles. So just work this down, more pressure towards the top than the uh, end of the stroke because of course we're going to be blending three colours together. And then down here, I'm actually going to change to that circular blending because we have a curved line. So I'm going to take that all the way into that little corner there. And then as well, I'm going to go into this bit so again I'm going to show you one of these curtains so I can move on to something else so what you see me do here is exactly what I've done on all of the others there we go and then I'm going to move on to the violet deep so again for those just jumping in we're on Castle Arts watercolour pencils at the moment And we just slightly over blend the first colour. And then we'll just feather that edge off slightly. Same with this one. And then we'll have the highlight towards the middle. And then with this one, I'm going to add this all the way down to the bottom just mind for the cat's head or he's going to be a very strange new breed that has purple ears <laughs> and then onto the lightest color which is this cobalt violet light and then all we're doing with that is literally block coloring over and this merges all of the colors together beautifully there we go Jackie don't worry at all honestly you're absolutely fine people jump in and out as and when they can oh Maggie's here as well hiya Maggie so just getting this water brush going again so I'm going again like you saw me do with the sky work from the lightest colour up lightest colour down so we just start activating towards the middle here so little circles just pull all of those shades together and then we just work quite quickly on this one there we go you can just dab that around so what we'll do is carry on going down into these darker shades down here And then we carry on while it's still damp. 
So any little um, fiddly bits that don't look quite right, again, we just put in one layer of watercolour down and we're correcting with ordinary pencil over the top. So with these ones, we just start at the bottom edge where the light pigment is and just blend up to the top. So just be a bit careful here of Mr. or Mrs. Pussycat because we don't want him, to, him or her to have a purple head. And it would be a look, I'm not sure it would be a good look, but um, so we'll just get enough water in there just to activate that colour. And then once that's dry, we will use some Prismacolor over the top. Just seeing that's not quite there yet. So we will have a look at something else while we're waiting on that drying up. Okay, that should be dry enough to let me start working on the roof. So let's move this down a wee bit and find the roof colours. So we have some... 50% cold grey, so this is Prismacolor, so 50% cold grey. We have some slate grey as well. We also need a white pencil, so again I'm just using my Prismacolor one. We also have some artichoke as well. There will be potentially a little bit of lime peel green as well. And then quite possibly for shadowy bits. We'll stick with the cool grey but we'll use the 90%. So some of the basis of this roof colour is from the Chris Cheng um, one where it's in World of Flowers and it's like a half and half picture. It's got buildings at the top and foliage at the bottom. And I've tweaked it slightly to fit it in with what I'm doing on this page. So I didn't come up with these colour blends, it was Chris. So we'll go in first with the 50% cold grey. So I'm just going to give this a little sharpen. It's just getting too short to go into my nice Dial 133, which is why I've got my little trio one standing by. So we'll get our base layer of this down. In fact, you're just a bit too short to be comfortable to hold, so let's just whip you into a pencil extender. That's better. So, we get a base layer down first. So we're colouring these tiles from the top downwards. So you can put your cold grey wherever you like on these tiles as much or as little as you want, but just leave yourself a little pop of white at the edge. So carry on with this all the way down. So just varying very slightly where we're putting the, the grey, just so that they don't all, don't all have to look quite the same. And then while we've got this in my hand I will do the little edging stone bits as well. So nice and gently, little circles. You want a sort of a sharper pencil really rather than a blunter edge for this which is why you can see me rotating the pencil around because it's such a small area to work into. If you have a dead blunt pencil it becomes a bit tricky. So I'll carry on down here. So I had a hell of a quandary about what colour I was going to do the, this roof, um, which you'll probably remember from Monday. And then I remembered, well, I went to my journal actually for inspiration, like what have I done before? And um, found this palette and I thought, ah, oh, this is nice and neutral, so this could work. Oh, Maggie, you're doing your picture while you're watching. <laughs> So same principle on this one, we're just putting a little pop of this grey down the side of these edging tiles. And that one. And then while we're here as well, what we'll do is um, let's have the lighter edge going up towards the chimney. Just looking what I did on the other side, so I was doing this last week while I was watching Call the Midwife in the evening. I seem to um, 
get hit with a fit of inspiration. There we go. And we'll do the same on this one. So pretty much the same as the tiles, really. So obviously what I'm doing here is the same for these little bits here. It's also the same for these stones in here as well. Same here, here, here and here. So if you can do the roof, you can do the rest of this. It's exactly the same. So swapping over then to the slate grey, so 936. Just going to grab my sharpener again. Bits everywhere. Okay, so with this one, nice and gently, we're just going to overlay that first grey layer and still leave ourselves with that white edge. So really, really, really gently, just tickle the page. Don't put any pressure on at all. Don't want to obliterate all of that gray. So nice and gently. You just want to glaze the pencil onto the page. So when we talk about glazing with a pencil, of course we're not doing it like this, which is very hard pressure. Pencil on the side, more using the edge of the tip of the pencil rather than the pointy end. So you just hold it kind of flat and just glaze the colour on. So nice and gently. But still leave ourselves with some bits of white so you can vary how much you leave that you don't have to colour them all exactly the same. You can see I'm not really overthinking this, I'm just getting the colour on the page. It doesn't matter if you go over these lines either because we will sharpen those up with the 90% cold grey anyway. So we'll do exactly the same up here. It's just going to, of course it's gone a, bit, a little bit wonky donkey because of the watercolour. So just encourage it to lie a bit flatter. And again... Just glaze that colour over the top. And we're going to do exactly the same with these edging tiles. And then we will be going for the white. But, I mean, I can see Maggie there saying um, about being heavy handed with colouring. I think in some circumstances you do want to be heavy handed depending on the kind of effect that you're wanting to go for. For example, with your fire and ice colours, Maggie, in particular, the, the, the more heavy handed you are, the more striking they'll be. If you're doing something like this with a smaller area though, and you're getting lots of different layers going together, and you're not sure how to get yourself with a lighter hand, it is just a case of practicing a little bit. So, for example, if I show you on here, if we use the pointy end down for making that kind of shading, I'm putting hardly any pressure there and we've got quite a lot of colour coming off. With the glazing and holding it on the side, the same amount of pressure will give you a much finer layer of colour and that's where you get your layers and things building a lot, lot easier. So if you're not too sure, any of you that are watching, just practice on a spare piece of paper like this, getting your harder blending for when you're making um, you know, strong features and your softer blending for when you're doing things like this. Okay, so white Prismacolor. So this is going to be the blend layer. So I might as well carry on up here while it's already on an angle. So taking that over the whole thing. And this smushes those under colours together. And gives us a nice layer to start adding more bits and bobs in. So we do this over the whole thing. So a little stronger pressure. I'm not glazing here. I am pressing quite hard. Because what I want to do is smush two layers of pencil completely together. So take this over the whole thing. And this side as well. So go for a lot of white um, Prismacolor because I do do this quite a lot. 
when I'm doing flowers and things, I use the white quite a bit or other paler colours to do this kind of blend over with because it just seals everything underneath and lets you add more stuff over the top. This one is also too short to be in a, just in my hand and not in a pencil extender, but I just can't be bothered to dig another one out. So <laughs> I'm just going with it. They get so awkward when they're tiddly sized to hold on to. But we're sticking with it because there's a lot of life in this little chap yet. So we just over blend all of this stuff together. There we go. Right, where's my brush? There it is. Hiya Bev. Oh, you're not in capitals, so I know you're still in service. <laughs> okay. Next, we are going to go on with some of this artichoke. So again, this has come from that Chris Chen tutorial that I did. This creates a really interesting colour when you have blended over greys with a white. I rarely use this pencil, but it's really, really good for this kind of thing. So I'm going to start up top here. So more along the white edge, really. I'm just going to introduce little bits of this in places. So I'm not going to go across the whole thing. I just want to create a little bit of a, a distinction to the edge really. So I'm not going to do this on all of them. So I'm going to add some lime peel as well. So I'm just give a little bit of a contrast. So we'll do the same on here. So I'll go at the side on that one maybe. So just add this along the bottom. And the same on here as well. So just wherever really. It's such a, a, a weird colour this is. But really good for this. I mean, there's no way I would have put these colour combos together if I hadn't have done that tutorial in Worlds of Wonder that Chris did. But it just works so, so well. So let's just have some over the middle of that one. Have some on the edge of there. Go for the middle again. And you can take this up into the grey as well. It doesn't just have to be along the white edge here. Just wherever, nice and random. And I might have a little bit more of it down here because we're in a bit of a gully. So I'm going to use the lime peel. That will be the last one. Ah, oh, Vivian, I didn't realise you were here. I'm so happy you're here. Oh, bless. Calls them baby pencils. Oh, how cute is that? No, I've got, I think my... my smallest baby pencil at the moment is this one which is my deco yellow so I have a brand new one here but uh, but I'm resisting using it as much as possible although the woods are a completely different colour which I think is really quite strange very odd anyway um what am I doing what am I doing 90% cold grey there we go so 90% cold grey Again, in Prismacolor. So we're going to use this to get our first layer of shadow going on in here. So I've block coloured um, the little apex of the roof in this colour. And then, again, holding this down because it's a bit wonky donkey. I'm just very lightly again. I'm going to take this over basically all of the surfaces. So we'll have a little bit of shadow in under here where these tiles are overlapped. And then I'm using it to give a bit more of a contrast to the line art because the line art is kind of quite brown and pale. So I'm just using that to uh, sharpen things up a little bit. So again, just nice and gently underneath, give ourselves a little bit of a shadow. Sort of in the background, here and not here. Oh, I didn't realise you were here, Vivian. I'm so happy. Lovely to see you. Well, you know what I mean. See you as in like... <laughs> on here <laughs> so I'm going to carry on all the way down so just re-outlining these tiles helps these to stand out as well a little bit against the other ones 
And that's not going very well. What's going on there? That's better. I have to press a bit harder, I think. So I'll just take this all the way down. So just re-outline absolutely everything on the way down. I'll take care. Talk to you later, Maggie. And don't forget, everybody, Maggie has got um, a group event going on in here in my group and also in the Johanna Basford Your Pages group where she's going to be posting regularly um, her colouring and her colour combos, some of her tips and tricks and things. So do follow along. Unless uh, Maggie tells me different, it won't be any like live stream type events. It will more be like um, a bit like an art journal type thing um, to show you guys what she's using. But do give her your support and join into the event. I'm so super excited that she's sharing her talents with us. It's wonderful. Right, lime peel, here we go. So I'm just going to finish them up sort of as I do them so that I don't forget quite what I'm what I'm doing. So with the lime peel, I'm literally, just, again, not all of them. I'm just going to add little bits of this onto the edge. And then let's brush these bits away. There we go. So that is obviously how I've done all of the rest of these. So you'll be good to go. So we'll carry on. So still with the 90% cool grey. So I'm just going to re-emphasise this midline here. I'm also going to re-go over the top line. And just go over the sides and then really, really gently little circles. So we just blur the edge here between the stonework and this grey bit. And then we'll have a little bit of shadow so again, whisper, whisper soft on here, nice and gently. Just blur the line, get a couple of nice little bits of shadow going. We can stick the smallest little smidge of lime peel in a couple places. And also I've got my trusty black pencil and just really use that to get into these nooks and crannies. So we go on with the 90% cold grey first, then we hit it with the darkest colour. This is easier to build this up in layers than use the black and risk being too heavy handed and have it looking too dark. So I'm gonna do the same here because I've chosen this as the light edge, so I'm just gonna shadow in along here and just tweak the edge of this chimbley slightly because it's not quite well chimney I've got I call them chimbleys I've called them chimbleys since I was little <laughs> you just forget your life and then say a word that doesn't exist sorry guys <laughs> oh dear dear so do exactly the same with this one and then we just go in with the black any little areas um you want to add like little crevices, little cracks on the stonework. You just make little lines, little squiggles. There we go. And then we will tackle this. See, I'm panicking again now because the comments have stopped again. I'm like, are they all still here? Oh. So back on with the 90% cold grey. So again, we're doing exactly the same thing. Add in whatever little lines and bits that you want to, but at the same time, using this to re-go over the original lines of the uh, of the line art here. Liz is still here. I love that spelt chimbley. That's it, Carol. Yeah, chimbley, chimbley pots. I don't think that's something that my grandma used to say. Actually, I'm trying to think where the devil that came from. Oh, Christine's still here and colouring a toucan. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm trying to, where's, is that in Joanna Basford bit, Christia, that toucan? What one is it? Is it jungle? I think it's jungle. If that is indeed the toucan you're doing, it might not be. Do tell, need to know now. <laughs> but yeah, where did I get that from? I think it must be a northern thing. I'm sure my grandma used to call them chimbleys. I don't know. But anyway, it's stuck and that's what I call them anyway. Chimbley pots. So again, while I'm here, um, I'm just going to tweak away with my lime peel wherever. And then where we need to um, just deepen any of these shadows or lines or whatever, we whip out the trusty black. 
and in we go. So I'm going to just a little circle in the black over the top of these because of course we're in between the chimbley and the roof so this would be a little darker if we were going for you know realism or whatever I mean some of this is clearly not real but you know what I mean so you can just tweak away on this one. Oh, you're doing the one in the planner god how sad is that i haven't colored in magical jungle in like a year and i remember that that's the one where the chicken is <laughs> i need to get out more just not to stationery shops because i never buy anything god what a wasted trip that was dear or a dear so same again back with the 90 percent cold gray so while we're at it we just redefine that line art make any little lines that you want to along here give ourselves a nice little bit of shadow again so again inside of this roof we will shadow that in slightly honestly and we were in the car for like an hour what did you come home with oh sharpener and a pencil <laughs> it's a good job really with everything i got sent so i'm glad you're on here carol because i can obviously say thank you in person so lovely carol sent me um three hannah carlson books for my birthday they landed on wednesday well, it was quite funny, actually. I knew they were coming because, Carol, you told me that they were coming Wednesday. So we heard the van pull up. Catherine went racing down the stairs to go to the front door and everything. Because when I'm working at home, I've usually got the laptop on my knees. So I'm covered in wires. I can't actually escape as quickly as she can. And then came in with the biggest armful of books. So the Beauty of Horror book from Elise was there. Thank you very much. The three Hannah Carl's on books were there from Carol. Again, thank you very, very much. There was, what else was there? Faber-Castell soft pastels. So they came with no notes. So if I haven't said thank you to somebody, I'm really, really sorry. I just don't know who to thank. I have put it up on my socials and nobody's told me it was them. So I'm like, it's like a phantom gifter. I have no clue. Um, and what else had turned up? Something else had turned up as well. I've had so much I can't even think what it was but she came in with an armful of stuff and when I counted them I'd basically been gifted 10 books um the pastels what else it sounds dead or ungrateful when you can't remember but my mind is like mush I've basically had so much stuff you saw the post I put up so any of you and all of you that that gifted me something for my birthday thank you so so much it was really kind of you. I'm going to have enough colouring material to see me through to my 99th birthday, if God willing I get to that age at this rate. But um, yeah, to everybody who sent me something for my birthday, it really wasn't necessary, but I'm so, so grateful. So thank you. Oh no, Alexandra's actually asking me which Hannah books now. Oh God, I can't remember the titles. And I can't even check on my iPad because I'm using it. Oh, I want to say Summer Nights was one. I want to say Daydreams was another, the green cover. The third one, I can't honestly remember. Is it Seasons? Oh, no. They're in, the, they're in my cupboard on the other side of the room as well. And Catherine's not here. <laughs> She's upstairs. Um, but Beauty of Horror 2 as well. Cracking pictures in there. But yeah, who gave me the, the pastels? I wonder if it was my mum. Oh, that was the other book. Um, oh, Flora. Maria Troll, Flora. So, um, yeah, I've I had quite a week. <laughs> You'd love a Clara book. Aww. Um, the Louise, if you're interested in um, where to source one from, drop me a message. Because I did, um, I'm sure I put a thing up in the group a few months ago. But I did get a Clara Markova book. Um from Tony, Tony Van something or other, I can't remember what his surname is, but lovely bloke. Um, the postage was about 13 quid to the UK, which when I looked at the Etsy stores for my um, Clara Markova book was very competitive because it was going to cost about 27 quid to get it from Etsy. So I think all in all I got it for under £40, but it was well worth it. What's an Etsy saying? Let me see. Strange made up words. Oh, hey. Lily Matters. <laughs> I've never heard that, Annette. That's um quite interesting. 
I'll have to ask my mum later on about this chimbley thing. If it was grandma, she'll know. Look at me blethering away. We've still got loads of colouring to do. But yes, yeah, so I had a good week anyway. So thank you very much, guys. So a wee bit of lime peel in a couple places again. So just nice and loose wherever. Just gives it a little bit of contrast. And I'm going to grab the black just to shadow in. Uh, the black is in your hand now. You have lost the plot completely. Dear Lord. Right, so a little black pencil. So I'm just going to redefine the edge of this chimbley here because we kind of lost it a little bit. And the edge of that one as well. And I might actually just re-outline. I don't think I did outline these ones because I knew I would be doing the roof first, which is why they look a bit peely wally. There we go. Christy, your mother-in-law says chimbley too. Where's your mother-in-law from? Is she from up north? I think it's a northern thing, you know. It's going to do my head in now. I'll ask my mum after. Put something um, up in the group to tell you. But yeah, chimbley pots. So I'm just going to lightly circle, blend over these, just in the areas where I would want them to be the smallest shade darker, just for shadowing things. So I'm going to go down the side of this as well and just sit back and have a critical look I want more lime peel in there it's not quite green enough Bourneville ah. so it looks slightly different you see um, under the lamplight versus normal light so you just have the smallest of looks at this let me just do a little bit of tweakage. Oh, the robin's singing out back, I can hear him. Lovely little birdie. There we go. So let's just have a critical look at that. Will that do? Yes, it will do. Beautiful, how are we doing for time? Three minutes past. Okie dokes. So I'll do this bit of woodwork with you next because then you guys will be able to do this bit so let me just get my ducks in a row again so base layer is with this chocolate color it's a very very tiny little tiny little chap again it is in chocolate i'm not lying am i base chocolate yep no we're all good i've got a list and it's terrible <laughs> Okay, so this, um, what I'm going to show you here is exactly how I've done all of these other areas of um, woodwork, including around the front door here, um, every window frame. This one will also be done this way, but I should do it off camera. Lisa's laughing at ducks in a row. <laughs> With them sayings. So, this is a very, very loose way of doing woodwork. So what we basically do is get a base layer down, nice and random, leaving lots of white space. There we go, and just nudge that dark colour all the way up against the roof tiles and definitely into this little eave bit here. There we go layer one. Layer two, I'm just going to use the new pencil because the size of the one that I've got is a joke. So Sienna Brown, so 945. They use the word chimbley in Norfolk, do they, Julie? How bizarre. I wonder where I've heard it. I just don't know. So I'm going to take this over, not all over the chocolate layer, but enough so that we've merged it together, but still leaving some little highlights so again nice light pressure with the pencil and these browns are very very similar and this sienna brown is obviously a color that i used in the stone wall so this is just a way of recycling colors that have already been used which makes the picture look a lot more harmonious next recycled color from the brickwork you'll recognize is this golden rod 
so 1034 golden rod doesn't matter if it's um, blunt um, the tip of this because again we're just we're pretty much glazing the colour rather than that's what it is Julie because I'm from Lancashire you see so it's got to have been something that my grandma said because my whole family is from Lancashire whole family I just talk like this because I haven't lived there since I was about 18 months old but when I go back up there <laughs> as Catherine can attest to <laughs> start talking like one of the locals again which is quite amusing <laughs> Right, have I got my new sepia out as well? I don't know if I have, because again, the little one I've got is ridiculous to try and show you on camera. <laughs> so the sepia one, so 948, this is where we start to put our base layer, layer, layer of shadow in. So we darken in at the apex of the roof. Nice sharp pencil this time. And we just do lines. There's no real trick to this. It's literally um, a sharper version of what you saw me do with the chocolate. So we just pop some lines in. We carry on down. Score stones pipe. What does that mean, Elise? Is that the Norwegian word for chimney? So I'm going to carry on. Again, I'll just darken in at the, um, ah, score stones pipe. I bet I haven't even pronounced that correctly, but, huh. So I'm just um, put in some little darker bits as well. And then we whip out the black pencil again. Not bad, says Elise, thanks. <laughs> no, your Norwegian pronunciation of chimney was not bad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so black, I'm just going to use the slightly bigger one because these these are the little ones I'm using. They're just ridiculous now. When you're on live stream, they're ridiculous anyway. So I'm just going to take a second to darken under where these tiles are. And also just add some little sort of a bit like knots really in the wood so it's just sort of crisscrossy lines it's very loose there's no right or wrong way I kind of like doing woodwork like this it looks nice and rustic so you can colour some sort of blocked areas in black as well still leaving you know some of these light bits too just gives it a bit of contrast and then I'm going over the original line art again because it's it's almost like a I mean it's not black and it's not brown it's a really odd shade but when you've started colouring around it, it you sort of lose you lose it a little bit so I have been re-outlining things so I'm just very much pointy and down with this one you can see that I'm pressing a lot harder this is not glazing like I've shown you a few minutes ago this is detailing so we will be pushing a lot harder with the pencil while we're doing this bit and then just going along the edge of the tiles there and then I'm just going to get rid of those bits and just sit back and have a critical look yeah so to finish up I'll just use this little guy so back to the sienna brown again and this is where I just glaze over slightly and this is really really gentle pressure with the pencil so you've still got those light highlights underneath and let me just give a really really gentle overblend and it just brings those darker colors together there we go beautiful right show you these leaves real quick as well and then we will tart up the curtain so for these leaves, I have recycled colours that I, again, that I've already used in the stonework. So all I've used is marine green and lime peel. So just marine green and lime peel. Oh, thanks, Liz. See, the comments have dried up again and I'm like, oh my God, is my phone about to... Just 
chat drivel to me guys because that's what you're listening to me doing at the moment <laughs> so let me just go in at the base of the leaf nice and random and just pop a darker bit of colour in like so then we grab the lime peel and we do the top bit this is what you call a 0.16 of a second leaf. Let's go over the top, go over the top, go over the top. Yes, please. That's Catherine just reappeared. Hello. <laughs> Coffee time. Coffee time. I blooming need it. I'm talking more drivel than normal. Let's <laughs> just back on with the marine green. Drivel, 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 says Sandra. And Alexandra's trying to work out how to colour a snail. Why is the snail? Is this on a different page or am I missing something? I don't know. So let's just darken these leaf bases in. Darken, darken, darken. And that is as complex as that gets. So let's do the old trunk now. No, I can't remember. What did I do? Did I do Sienna Brown first? Oh, God. I don't think I did. I think I did the sepia first. Did I even write it down? No, I didn't. What a plank. Right, we're going to go with the darker colour first. So sepia. She's in the kitchen now, Alexandra. She's not being ignorant. She's bogged back off into the kitchen to put the coffee pot on. Okie doke. So we've gone for... I think what we'll do is we'll have light edged that side. So let's go in with the sepia down this side first. So we're just having dark edge, light edge. So this bit, um, I'm going to faff about with this when I do the uh, the base down here. So let's just get the um, dark areas outlined and decided on first. So make that pretty dark there. Let's go light edge on this side because it's facing the sky. I'm going to have a slight light edge on the underneath of this one. Let's take this all the way up and just carry on along. So of course we'll have a light edge towards the top so I'm not going to go too mad with the sepia down this bit. And then let's Go down the opposite side here. Mm. Let's go down this bit. And up there as well. So then with the Sienna Brown. Beautiful, says Crystal. Thanks. So we'll just really gently. Oh, is that nib loose? No, it must have been feeling things. So very gentle circles, leaving a little pop of white because we're going to be introducing some lime peel down the side. So just overblend that very slightly. It's a nice little light edge. So this is how I've done the other bits of the trunk. So this is loads of homework for those of you that are following along to do. And I shall carry on with um, some of these bits again this evening, I think, while we're watching the telly. Oh, Robin's singing out the back, bless it. Gorgeous. Oh, singing its little socks off. So we just take this down the side here. And I think what I'm going to do actually is just rediscover the outline there which I've lost slightly because of doing the brickwork and then lime peel the so lime peel again oh Alexandra you don't have this book I'm thinking it's 
would probably be a good purchase. I'm such an enabler. So all we do is that light edge and we just introduce that line peel. So just smoosh all these colours together with the line peel. And then we just re-outline the darker bit. So you can blend that right into the sienna brown. It's not going to do anything. It just makes the sienna brown sort of pop a little bit more. I'll take this all the way to the bottom here. And then what we do is, um, let's do it in black actually. Ah, oh, thanks Annette. And Liz has got a pink sky. I can't see us because I've drawn the blinds, but it's been a nice day today. So I'm just going to gently take the black just to outline anything that needs a little bit of outlining, like this little bit of a branch here. And we just rediscover that bottom line, just make it a little bit darker. And again, we're just tickling the page with this because we don't want big um, black lines over everything. It's just a way of rediscovering these bits. Fairy, fairy tale book. I haven't seen that one, Louise. And I've actually been looking for um, Romantic Country, the third tale, and they don't seem to have it on Amazon UK. Or if they do, it's about something like 40 odd quid, which is ridiculous for a colouring book. I mean, I know I just said I got one of the um, Clara Markova ones, but that's a bit different because you can't actually get them anywhere in the UK. So you kind of accept that if you want it, you're going to pay a little bit more for it. Um, but no, I'm not desperate enough for it to pay 40 quid for it. It's ridiculous. And as we've established, I was gifted millions of books for my birthday, which I'll be colouring um, <laughs> until I'm retired, I think, which is wonderful. Oh, fab. So I'm just taking this down this edge and just make this a wee bit darker down here. There we go. So that is how this little chap was done and this little chap was done. So you've seen all of this stuff. So let's tart up the curtains. Okie dokie. So still with Prismacolor. So Violet, I'm the best enabler. Ah, any beds, lovely. So Violet. And Lavender. Yeah, it's very sad, the news about um, Hannah Coles on Laurie. Very, very sad, bless her. The, the outpouring of love that has, I've seen in the community after what she shared with us all the other day has been really heartwarming to see. And hopefully she's, she's feeling, you know, all of that love and positivity from everybody. But we, of course, all wish her the very, very best for a speedy and, and good recovery, bless her. Just giving these a wee sharpen, which I should have done before I came on really, but there we go. And then we'll identify the blues for this one as well. So I'm going to go on with the violet first. So 932. Carol, you didn't see what she shared. Um, the, a few days ago, she, um, I think if I'm remembering the content of her post correctly, she had an epileptic fit and had a scan at the hospital and she's been diagnosed with a brain tumour. So she's a very poorly girl at the moment, bless her heart. Um, but she's, if you have a look on her socials on Instagram, Carol, you'll see the story on there that she put up the post. So um, yeah, very, very sad news. So I'm just going over very, very gently. I don't want to obliterate the watercolour effect. All I want to do is smooth this out. So we're using that glazing technique again, really. Very little pressure going through the pencil there. So we don't want to obliterate the, the watercolour effect. We just want to tidy it up a little bit without putting a second layer of it onto the page. There we go. And then we just merge down into the lilac. So we're going from 
darkest down to lightest. So it's pretty much the opposite of what we did when we were activating the watercolour. We activate from lightest to darkest there. And when we're tweaking over the top, we go from darkest to lightest because that's where we get those sort of seamless colour transitions from one to the other. So just glazing these on. So I'll pop a little bit more of this down here. Mine's out for Mr or Mrs Pussycat's ear, which has got the slightly orange tip from the other watercolour that I used. And our lightest colour of lavender. And then we just get everything pulled together beautifully here. It's the one thing, isn't it, about the colouring community. It's just full of genuinely lovely people. Um, you know, I've been on the receiving end of um, how nice it can be this week for my birthday. And, you know, th th when things like this happen, um, you know, and somebody's struggling like that, she's just, I think, had sort of thousands and thousands of messages and well wishes from people. And I think if you're struggling with something like that, the, the boost of positivity that that would give you is wonderful and just shows um, one of the positive sides of social media and what a lovely community this is of you know like-minded people who genuinely sort of care about each other even though we've all never met right so I'm just cycling through those same three colors which is why I'm not holding them up to camera so again just going from darkest through to lightest just tidying this very badly drawn curtain up here there we go. So just give that a little, give that a little blend. Bits everywhere. I'm going to need my wee desk hoover, I think. There we go. And now that's been done. Um, what I'm just going to use is a very, very sharp black pencil. And I'm just going to redefine the edges of this woodwork which I didn't want to do until I've got the watercolour layer on. Oh, there's the coffee pot going. But yeah, it's one of the, the very positive sides of social media. It, you know, we all know it can have its negative sides, but, you know, in situations like that, you realise that um, a lot of people care. Bless her poor lady. Imagine that one, you know, one week knowing you're fine and then at the same time the following week having that happen to you. It's just, oh dear, oh dear, horrendous. So I'll show you what I've done to, with the little light bits under here. Um, this bit isn't rocket science, it's ever so simple. So a little bit of deco yellow. So I'm trying to use my little wee guy up, so I'm just going to get him back into the pencil extender it's almost beyond use now but we'll keep going while we can so just make sure the tips nice and clean yeah we're okay so just being very careful not to pull the darker pigments in from the edges of the window frame so just nice and careful in there and then to get the little bit of an effective shadow we just use a little bit of this burnt ochre colour so just really really lightly just glaze a bit of that over the top and it just gives a little a little hint of a shadow so you can see that I've obviously done a lot more of that on this bit here and the tops of these stones because we're going to have a lantern glow here oh thank you what forgot salty cow Salty caramel. Thank you, Nutchley. There are loads of people that said hello, but you bogged off into the kitchen. Oh, I'm getting tea ready. I know you're getting tea ready. <laughs> Can I give you that to take through with you, please? Because I don't actually need this. Okay. Hello to everyone who said hello. <laughs> <laughs> Delivering me my coffee. Thanks, babe. Mm. Right, have a wee slug of this. So, yeah, because we're going to have... Um, like a lantern glow thing going on here. I've added a bit of deco yellow to the very top of this stone and to the edges of these ones as well. I know she does, um, Angela, I've seen what she does with her things and she has retirement ceremonies and all sorts of things for that and divorces as well. <laughs> as I found out during a joint live a couple of weeks ago. 
<laughs> it's really funny, but I love it so much. What's for tea, says Liz? We're having chicken fajita pie. Mm. Oh, that coffee's good, which I'm really, really looking forward to. It's going to absolutely blow my socks off, but I'm looking forward to it. Oakley doakley. So I've put a little bit of a whisper of a white line on here um, just to sort of mimic um, glass. So I've just used a white pen for that really, really gingerly. I'm not going to go ahead and do that here right now because I want to investigate this blue area at the top and I will probably just drag my hand through it. So I'm not going to do that tonight. So let's have a little look. I'm going to unzoom slightly. I know a lot of you guys ask about how I choose my colours and all the rest of it. So we're going to do that right now. So apologies for the glare. This is in a, a wallet. So we've got my watercolour tester sheet thing here. And this is Prisma. So the shades that I've used, which I can't blooming remember. Hang on. Cobalt turquoise light, yes, it's them two. Sky blue and where's the fourth one gone? There it is. Primary blue. So what I'm looking for is shades that are quite similar. So it's cobalt turquoise. Cobalt turquoise light. I'm actually thinking electric and non-photo blue for the primary blue hmm I've got blues on the other side yes I have so for the primary blue it's a bit cobalt bluey china bluey and then I've got um, what's this one again sky blue so I think, let's grab the blues. <laughs> so cobalt blue, I don't know why I can't say cobalt blue. So cobalt blue, um, China blue, where have you got China blue? I think that one. I definitely said electric blue. China blue, is that you? And I'm seeing a bit of cerulean blue as well, just while I'm looking at the actual pencils. So I'm gonna have a mess about with these couple. Oh bless her, she is she is very, very good, isn't she? She always um she always makes uh, the dinner on a Sunday so I can be here with you guys. I'm just searching for my pad. There it is. So let's get a nice clean page. So the couple of blues that I've picked up. So I've picked up electric blue. So I'm just going to go ahead and glaze a little bit of that so I can see what it looks like. I've also picked up one of my favourite blues, this true blue. Mm. Might not quite be the right shade, I don't know, we'll see. A little bit of cerulean blue. I don't think that's the right shade at all. I'm going to put you to one side because I'm not convinced. So a little bit of china blue. Mm. Possibly. And a little bit of cobalt blue hue. I just want to see... So I think those three are probably the best bet. So let's have a little go. Let's have a wee go. So I'm going to move it over and we'll work on this little area in here and see how, how we go. So less is more with this kind of thing. I actually do want, um, which I didn't dig out. Let me just look at my swatchy thing again. Sky blue light, I think. Yeah. Sky blue light. Pick out the lightest one. What a donut. 
Right, so I've picked out this little chap as well, which is going to be a really good colour for overlaying this, this faint bit here. So I'm going to go on with the true blue first of all, so it's not my darkest blue. And I'm just going to see how this sits over the top, because I may not need to go, actually go any darker than this if this sits really nicely. That's actually not too bad. So again, I'm only glazing because I don't want to lose the colour that we've already got from the watercolours underneath. So yes, I could go to the water, not the watercolour, I could go to the Castle Arts Classic range, dig out the equivalent pencil, um, if there is one, which I haven't actually checked out. Can't really be bothered. Um, I'm liking how the Prisma sits over the top of this and I don't know how Castle Classic sits over the top of their watercolour range and I'm not prepared to test out something that I haven't tried yet. So I'm going for my safe, my safety net, which will always be Prisma. So really, 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 really light pressure. Literally whisper soft pressure. I'm going to add the tiniest little bit here as well. Bye for now. Take care, Annette, and take care, Liz. Possibly be around tomorrow as well. I really wanted to get this this image finished tomorrow, but we'll see how we go. So I won't do all of this sky with you guys um, because I need to make sure I'm available to help in the kitchen. So let's just glaze some of this into this corner. So I've gone quite dark here, so I'm going to really darken this bit up. Just glaze over. And again in these corner bits. So do you see how this is smoothing out the watercolour that's underneath? So where you've got any of those, um, you know, waterline marks that you don't really want to have or whatever. This is how you will correct them. Are there colours in the that are not in? Are there colours in the castle pencils that are not in Prisma? Yes. Um, you will always get different shades across different pencil ranges, and I think it just depends on what you're wanting to use. If if I hadn't have been able to find a close match for what I was doing here, then I would have defaulted to another range of pencils. But I don't, I don't think that I've needed to. Um, but yeah, um, that's why I like the castle uh, pastel tint ones because you get the pastel colours that you don't really have in a lot of the other colour pencil ranges. They sit really nicely across lots of the different brands. But this is working out quite well actually. I think it's only going to be these three colours. I've got quite a darker blue in my hand but I don't actually think I'm going to need it. So I'm just going to overlay that slightly. So we're just smoothing out that colour. And up here. So I'm going to be using a very, very similar... Oh, Laurie, you've bought the pastels, have you? That was another gift from Carol. Carol, you've spoilt me absolutely rotten in the last 12 months. You really have. <laughs> it's so kind of you. Beautiful set of pencils, three for Christmas from Carol, which was lovely, and they're beautiful pencils as well. So you'll see where I left the cloud shape, it was sort of quite a, a blob of a cloud here. All I'm doing is I'm using the pencils just to break that shape up a little to make it look a bit more natural looking. Carol's the um Hi, you're making me feel very loved. It's very sweet. Um, you're spoiling me absolutely rotten. You all are. It's so kind and um, it's not expected and not necessary, but very much appreciated. I don't think I've ever had that much gifts for my birthday since I was a little kid. Do you know what it's like when you're an adult and um, within reason, you usually have most of the things that you're wanting in life, don't you? If you can, you know, bank balance allows and all the rest of it gets really difficult doesn't it to give people a, like a list of things that you want for your birthday I think I'm the worst person to buy for ever and um yeah so I haven't had um that many birthday presents in a long time 
are wonderful. So I'm just using this to overblend the previous couple of colours. So again, still using that glazing motion with the pencil on the side because we don't want loads and loads of lines everywhere. Or you might if, if that floats your boat. It doesn't float mine, not for this page. So we're just going in for the gentle blending here. So we just overlay everything. Still leaving some of that white paper there. Let me just overblend. Very aware that my camera stand is wibbling around. Apologies, it's just because I'm pushing a little harder with this uh, this colour. I'm going to take this right over this dark area at the side as well and just pull all of that together. So just turn over and get the sharper tip down. Just being very careful that you don't drag the pigment from the, uh, the darker rooftop. There, that's looking quite nice. I actually just want to tweak. Just gonna tweak that bit a bit. I just want a bit more of a line in the cloud going through there. Quite like the sort of linear um, effects that you get on one of those days where there's just a bit of a breeze and the clouds go all wispy. Beautiful. So just add a little bit more of a, a linear type thing going on here. Castles, great colour matches with the pastels. Yeah, it does, um, Laurie, very much so. They've done well. I think they've plugged a gap actually in a lot of um, the different colouring pencil ranges that you can get to be fair and they've done a really good job with that so what time are we on Oof. do you know what I'm not going to carry on I'm going to leave it where I've blended sort of up to there so I'm not actually going to add any of anything else on here I'm not going to use any um you know white gel pen or pastel or anything else if you want to you can um, I'm not convinced it's going to add anything to it. I will just see what a bit of white pencil looks like over the top. But I just want to make sure that this is nice and clean because I was using this to blend something else last night. So I don't want like a big swatch of orange or something through it. So just where you are leaving. Um, yeah, that's quite pleasant. Where you've got those bits of white paper still left, you can just... Give yourself a, a bigger highlight really with a bit of white pencil in various places there we go that's looking sweet okie dokie so i'm just going to put those couple of blues to one side and get rid of these three which i'm not using so i don't get confused and let's unzoom and see where where we are at there we go okie dokie so we've covered quite a lot of ground actually today, haven't we? Which is wonderful. Don't think I will get this page finished tomorrow. I don't think there's a cat now was chance of that, but we'll see how we go. So for you guys that are obviously following along and catching up and all the rest of it, um, what you've seen me do here on the sky, I will obviously also do here. All your woodwork, you've seen the demo for this section. And you can see all the areas that that woodwork has been used around the piece. And I will be doing this bit tonight while I'm watching the TV. So your curtains, um, you know, if you want to leave your windows plain, leave them plain. If you want to draw the curtains in, it is literally just following these shapes. So if you're worried about doing that, do it in pencil first. All it is is lines. Um, there's, there's nothing complicated to it at all. So... You know, it's it's literally looking at the shape there. You know, if this is the window box, worst window box you've seen in your life, and all you're doing is following the lines. So, depending on how low you want in them, so we have a semicircle, a couple of lines at the side for creases in fabric, a couple down the top, and then we've got like a little bit of a frill going on at the bottom. So very roughly, that is your basic window shape. So if you want to do your curtains, just follow the pattern that you've got down here, but obviously a bit smaller. 
so you've seen how we've done the light area underneath the curtain as well I've covered how to do the tree trunk and the leaf colors that we've used the roof tiles and everything up here obviously these stonework bits you can follow all of this over this was done in exactly the same way as the roof tiles you're just putting your shadows in slightly different places so whereas we've done the roof tiles the shadow is coming down the tile for the step down here we've done the shadow layer going from the floor upwards and from the door back so you come in this way and this way and this little stone lintel here was done in the same way the drain pipe as well I've just added some little lines at the side to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional and this bit on these both of these sides you saw me do that when we did this area of the chimbley earlier on so I'm hoping to be back on again tomorrow um, this I will show you how to do this with this flower pot and what I think I'm going to do is to bring the sky colours in those blue prismas that you've just seen me using what we'll do is we'll reuse those blues for these flowers and then this effect here is made with acrylic paint pens so if you do have any acrylic paint pens lurking around anywhere um, I'll show you how to do this tomorrow so yeah, keep it tuned, keep tuned. I don't know whether I'm going to do it on Instagram or Facebook. I feel I should do it on Instagram really, to be fair to my Instagram people. But um, it may well be over on Instagram tomorrow night. Um, I'll put something up on my stories. And then this will have been finished. I'll have a palette ready for the lantern. We'll have a go at this and I'll aim to show you how to do this floor. And then it will just be finishing up bits with the ducks and everything. So... I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys. That's me over and out. And then we'll have to have a little chat about what page we're going to do next because I don't know whether to sort of carry on with this one or whether we're going to do something different in a different book. I really never want to see this stonework again. <laughs> and I haven't finished it, as you can see. <laughs> so, um, yeah, stay tuned anyway. I've um, got this cat to do as well, I need to have a think about that. But yeah, what's Beth saying? Had a spill on KB and LT. I'm not sure what you mean there, Bev. Had a spill. Had, oh, you haven't got a computer, we spilled on your laptop. Oopsie. So Alexandra says we should do Hannah Coles on. I'll have to have a little think about that. Definitely. But yeah, I'm going to love yous and leave yous now anyway. Need to get my uh, my ducks in a row before the dinner's ready. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Take good care. Just keep an eye on my socials because it'll either be here or Instagram tomorrow. I just can't quite decide what I'm doing. But as soon as I know, you'll know. <laughs> so take care, you guys. I'm just going to take you out of my phone stand. And it's bye from me. Take care.